so I promised you a follow-up video to the watercolor, the basic stuff that I gave you last time. Voila, here it is. So I'm gonna switch cameras and just show you a couple techniques that I didn't have time to go over the other day. Here we go. All right, you are looking at the watercolor that I did last class. And first of all, let's check on our salt texture that I talked about. So if you recall, I put salt into um, wet watercolor and we let it dry. Now you don't always know how this is going to turn out and I'm gonna scrape it off. Uh, and indeed it didn't do entirely what I hoped it would do. It's okay, it's not the greatest. Um, sometimes it works really well and sometimes it doesn't work at all. But you can see down here, particularly this, that's the texture I was going for, uh, I was hoping to see more of. I haven't quite figured out sometimes why it works and why it doesn't. This was like, meh. So hopefully yours worked out a little bit better if you tried this. I did want to show you today while I have your attention. Whoop, wrong direction, Sousy. There we go. Um, I didn't have a chance to talk to you about wax resist, which might be something that you want to try. So let me just do a simple thing. This is a white crayon. Um, you could also do this with a white candle. What matters is the wax and you want to press firmly. Let's say you've got a window frame that you want to preserve as white. And so what you would do is in the area that you've determined that you want to keep white and you don't want to add any color to it whatsoever, you're going to put down a firm layer of wax. Now the trick is you can't always see what you're doing, which I can't right now. The light, it helps to have light. So this isn't gonna be perfectly square. Uh, if you do this, I recommend you lightly draw out what, where you wanna mark this off first. I didn't think that far ahead, so I didn't do it. Now I'm gonna show this to you on miniature scale. So I'm going to quickly mix up some blue to put on, let's just say a blue background. Now this would be your whole sky, um, you know, your whole picture in this case, if you were doing a frame, I'm narrowing it down to one little section just to show you how the wax resist works. Most of the time where I see students use this really effectively when we go outside to watercolor in the fall is to uh, preserve the soccer net the netting on the fields when we're doing that. Sometimes students want to include the soccer nets. And so taking a small little detail like that and preserving it is really helpful. Um, you may want to do it for your window frame. I actually think that if you have a window frame, a more effective uh, way of showing that, even if the frame is white, is to give it a very light wash of gray. But that is up to you. You're the one at home. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna add some purple. Let's make this really fun. Let's make this a little, little pretty. Ooh, I like that. Okay. All right, you guys can't see what I got going on over here. My apologies. There we are. All right, I'm going to try to find the area. Oh, here we go. All right, so I'm gonna see how well I drew blindly. <laughs> so I'm just applying this wash over. Oh, ran over there. <laughs> All right, do you see how the watercolor runs right off the wax? And you're like, oh, but it's smudgy. There's little spots. I see little spots. Well, my friends, no te preocupes. Por qué? blot it right off. And I was showing you this very quickly. Obviously, if you were doing this in person, you'd be taking a little bit more time. I just wanted to show you how this works because some people haven't encountered this technique. So again, this is called um, wax resist. And the resist is because the paint resists sticking. All right. 
Now, let me show you one more thing that might be helpful. Let's say you're watercoloring around and, ooh, I like this delightful red over here. And let's see, get some on my brush. Hold on, you can't see what I'm doing again. Ah! So like I got this red and whoops! What do I do about that? I now have red coloring on my watercolor painting. So this is, watercolor has the problem of being a little bit tragic in that once you get it down, it's really hard to get it off. But let me show you a technique that I want you to try. So first thing first, take a paper towel if you've got watercolor or you don't want it. Notice I'm not rubbing, right? I'm blotting and I'm going straight down and straight up. I'm not going side to side because if you go side to side, it's going to smear. So, I've gotten the most of it up that I can. Now what I'm gonna do, and this isn't gonna 100% fix it, but it will help tremendously. Red and black are some of the hardest colors to fix. I am going to get this area wet. And I'm going to again, let it soak in for a second and blot it very gently with a paper towel. Some colors pull up better than others. All right, and so that is how you go about attempting to fix an area that you've accidentally gotten watercolor on that you didn't intend to. So it's not going to 100% fix it, um, but it will help. And then you can, if you've got just a little spot, you can kind of narrow it down with a stiffer brush and gently work that area. Oops, and I managed to get blue from my paper towel. So I guess making sure you have a clean paper towel is helpful. Just very gently kind of rubbing over it. And that's about as good as you can expect to do. That's pretty good. All right, that looks pretty decent. Um, and sometimes with watercolor, you have to just get creative. Uh, I've had students put in hot, wa uh, hot air balloons in the sky because a big splotch of color fell on it and there was just no way we were going to recoup that. So it's always easier if you try to fix it um, right away while before it's dried, but you can go back into some varying degree um, remove at least a little bit of the paint once it has dried completely. But with watercolor, you really have to plan ahead. All right, last thing. I showed you how to do a wash last time. Now today, if you were coming over this, uh, I wanted to show you what this looks like with the dry brush underneath. So I don't exactly know what this area is. I don't really care. I am going to Maybe put in a little bit of grass at the front. And let's just say this is kind of winter grass. So I'm going to pick some brown. And now that I've got this wash, I can sort of easily come over top and start putting in details. And I'm going to let some be darker, some be lighter, some small, some large just kind of put down a base layer. Uh, and then the next thing I'm going to do, swish and flick. Oh, let's add a little green to this party. So I'm gonna pick up the light spring green. Realize it does help if you can actually see what I'm doing. And so I'm gonna bring this down and roll it till I have a point. And then I feel like I've got too much. So you might want a little scrap piece of paper to get off some excess. True dry brush barely has any water. It's just enough to pick it up, but I'm doing sort of a cross between. Now I'm gonna come in and fill in these layers. And this is kind of the secret to watercolor. It looks really great when you start adding multiple layers and you have to have patience to do that because watercolor has to have a chance to dry. 
you can't do the whole thing in one sitting or one day because it's got to dry in between really well. And then you come back and you add different layers. And adding different colors adds to that feeling of layers. So when you paint things darker, they appear to our eyes to be a little bit more forward and lighter things tend to fade to the back. Now, I don't love this green that is in the box. It's really hard for whatever reason. I have never found a watercolor green that I like for a darker shade. This is a little bit emeraldy for my taste. You can mix it with a little bit of black to dull it, um, but a little bit goes a long way. But you get the idea. I'm just showing you sort of an effect for close up. All right. So as you start adding layers, and I would come back and do a final one after this has dried, and that starts to give you sort of a built up layered appearance. And that helps our paintings feel um, more than basic, right? It, it elevates the painting. It makes it more interesting to look at. So the more layers you have, the better. All right. Um, other than that, I just wanted to briefly remind you, as you do your watercolor, you want to work, again, from top, down, background to foreground. So if I were starting on this, uh, think about the thing that is furthest from my eye. And in this case, it's going to be the sky. So I would put the sky in. The next thing I would do would be to put in these hills. And then I would put in, uh, I think I had this plotted out as like a road that goes through here. Oh no, here's the road. And then I've got some fields. So I could do all that kind of at the same time. Although I have to be careful depending on drying because one, remember that watercolor will bleed over. So you wanna make sure that if you were doing, oh, I don't know, a blue sky and yellow trees, that you make sure that you let that blue sky dry before you put in the yellow trees. Otherwise you're gonna wind up with a edge of green, right? So these are the things you have to think about when you're doing watercolor. Uh, anyway, so then I do that, then I do the bush, then I do whatever this is. I think that's also a bush. Then I would do my window frame. Uh, then I do the window casing and then the outside framing, and then I do the plant, and then I do the wall. And that's how you go about doing watercolor, how you plot it out and plan. And remember, you have to think ahead in terms of areas that you might wanna keep white. If you've got clouds in your sky, you need to leave those areas blank before you put the blue in. You could do a wax resist, although I would think clouds are best done when you add a little bit of gray to the bottoms of them and add a little bit of color. They're not just purely white. Um, that helps give them texture. So if you do a wax resist, you wouldn't be able to add in any other colors to them. So you gotta think about that, all right? If you guys have any questions, let me know. I'm sorry I can't help you in person, but hopefully you will find this a little bit helpful. Take care, bye.